Hi, welcome back to our channel. And for those who haven't seen me before, my name's Cliff. Uh, what we're doing today is we're going to do a little airbrush of our uh, pet bulldog. Uh, it's getting on a bit now, so we thought we'd uh, have a little something to remember him by. So we've got this little bit of suede, and what we've done now is obviously we've just cut an outline of his head, which we've just put on, and we're just sort of freehand, just doing some little bits of light and dark, so we have an idea of where everything goes. Um, and we'll continue with the rest of his body, and then we'll just fill in freehand. Right, what we've done now is we've just done a basic outline of Harley um, and now really what we do is we'll then start paying attention and actually start working each little area as we come down and, uh, and correct anything but obviously until we start getting some darks etc in there it will start coming together. Okay, as we see, what we've done now is we've gone over with a little bit more white and we just keep building layer after layer after layer. When I first started doing things, I'd watch people do things on the internet and I would always think, oh, I can find a quicker way of doing that. But once you get into it and you start doing more and more, then you realise it's not just a 2D, it's not just sort of white on top of black or whatever, it is doing the underpainting, getting the different layers, so you sort of tend to look through, because with airbrushing, it's this layer on top of layer, where if you were doing an oil painting, then it's just, the paint is that top colour, you don't really see through it, so that's why you're blending, but with airbrushing, you paint two pieces of white, then you spray white over the top, but those two pieces are going to get heavier, or brighter, than the piece that's only had one coat and so on. So as you're building up layers, it's seeing what's going on underneath is coming through. So there's no real quick solution. The more time, the more effort, the more layers, the better so the picture. Now if, which I haven't done for a long time, is paint on jackets, suede, uh, jean jackets, things like that. If you want to paint on a jean jacket, um, obviously the fabric can be quite porous, which is not very good because your paint soaks in and that's not really what you want. Now there is things like, um, this sort of golden, which is like a clear, an acrylic, which we tend to saturate the surface of, say, a jean jacket first, um, let it dry, and we run an iron over it, and we try and get the surface as flat as possible, and that stops the paint from soaking in. But on this one, we've used a bit of suede, and it's nice to have that little bit of more texture, which sort of lends itself a little bit more like animal hair, I suppose. Um, so that's what we're doing here at the moment. All right, so that is the end of this segment of where we are. Um, obviously, we'll be back with part two, which hopefully will be more on the dog. Um, if you'd like to subscribe, and obviously any comments, um, always welcome to hear from you.